Hello, this is Don with MechSoft Support. Today we're going to be taking a look at Rhino 3D Print 2016. And in this video, we're going to show you how easy it is to create a support structure for your mesh automatically so that it can support it during printing in your 3D printer. Let's have a look. Let's go up to the Perspective View tab and maximize that. So here's our part inside the printer volume. Now let's go and create a support structure. So from the 3D Print tab, pick the Support Generation command. Select the mesh. And for the dialog options for Support Generation, there's quite a few parameters here. And what will be helpful for you to understand these parameters, you can pick the little help icon at the top of any command dialog and it'll display the online help for that command. If you scroll down here, you will see a good illustration that shows you what these parameters mean. Now what the support generation command does, and it's really cool, it'll automatically grow a support structure from the base of your part down to the bed of your printer. And it's based on the overhang angle that you enter. So with this in mind, let's go ahead and set our parameters. With the overhang angle, we're going to set it to 45. For the maximum angle, and the maximum angle is the angle that the support structure is allowed to deviate as it grows its structure. We'll set that to 45 degrees. For the support diameter, which is the um, diameter of the support tubes that are going to be created, for the support diameter, we'll set it to 0.2. The sampling distance is critical. This determines the distance between any two branch points or support, support points on the overhang area of your mesh. So we're going to set that sampling distance to 0 0.25. We'll set the connector diameter to 0 0.1, the connector height to 0 0.5, the base diameter to 0 0.5. 375. Now the base diameter and the base height, you'll see that from every branch, it's going to go down to the printer bed. And on the printer bed, it's going to automatically create a base diameter and a base height to as a platform to uh, support each of those branches. So for the base diameter, we're going to make it 3.375, the base height 0.1. And the base connectors on mesh, what this does is there may be areas in your mesh where the connectors can't get to the overhang angle or can't get to the base of the printer without actually passing through the part. And this will determine uh, how you want to handle those connectors, whether you want to minimize any connectors on the mesh or you can uh, disallow them. In other words, it'll have to avoid your mesh completely in order to get to the base of the printer. Or you can allow them. And for this particular example, we'll just select the minimize option. Now, this dialog has four different tabs. Now, after you set the parameters tab, go to the support generation tab. And we're going to grow a tree type support structure. Now, this the tree type is what we have in the example here, where it grows out in a tree fashion. And it'll branch off uh, automatically to get to the under uh, overhang angles of your part. So we'll set it to tree and then we'll generate. And what you see here, and this is pretty cool, is it determined, let's turn the mesh volume, I mean the printer volume off so you can see this better. It determined the overhang angles. This is a 45 degree overhang angle. So any overhang angle, it created the sampling distance points where your branch points connect from your overhang and it organically grew a tree structure down to the printer bed. So now we're pretty well supported for 3D printing. Now that's a cool command. Let's turn our printer volume back on. Now, one thing you want to make sure, you have to actually generate the support structure. This is just a preview. And if you're interested in looking at seeing the tree, uh, the straight 
uh, tree. Let's pick, go ahead and pick that and we'll pick generate so you, just, you can see it. So it just extends the tree, the support structure straight down to the printer bed. I happen to like the tree structure because it's cool. So let's, let's use that. So here's our tree structure for support structure. Now, there's other commands on here that you can experiment with. We won't do that right now. You can manually add and remove branch points if you think it needs more support in different areas. Let's go to the Details tab, and it calculates the volume and the length of your support structure. And then go to the Create Meshes tab. Now here, you can choose to add the support structure to the main mesh, and it'll be one mesh, or you can create a separate mesh. Now, creating a separate mesh has its advantages because advantages, if you want to come back later and you want to delete the support structure, it's real easy to do. You just delete the mesh and you can regenerate another one. So let's leave it as create a separate mesh and we'll create the meshes. So now what we see here, we see our support structure was generated for us and it's a separate mesh. If you go up here on the data tree, you see you have a mesh for the support structure and a mesh for the main mesh of our part. Okay, so we're done there, so we can close that. Now, we have uh, a part that is ready to be printed. We have a support structure that's ready to be printed. It's within our printer volume. Uh, it's passed all the checks, so we're ready to uh, 3D print this part. Now, on the 3D print tab, uh, you have some different options. You can export the file to a, uh, an STL file or uh, another, a couple of other different options. Let's go ahead and show you that. Just select your meshes, right click, and you'll see that you can export it to an STL file or a stereolithography SLA file or an additive manufacturing AMF file. For now, we'll just pick an STL file and we have one there. We'll just go ahead and overwrite that.